Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyViews.ca and this is an unboxing, yeah there's no box but bear with me, of the JRZ Prime, which it says right here, Prime PZ1 pads and gloves. So JRZ is pretty awesome, um, they'll send you a set of demo gear if you pay for shipping. Um, so I was pretty interested in these, Very, I was very interested in the blocker, I uh, also want to try the pads. The blocker reminds me of Bauer 1X or Reactor 6000. Um, so I was interested in trying that out to see if I can kind of go with that and grab that, see if I like it, because I'm a huge fan of that blocker. Um, but regardless, I'll give you a bit of a background of JRZ or JRZ. Um, so this company is based out of Quebec and they're obviously in Canada. These pads and gloves are made in Canada. JRZ, it, they make so like bags, they make uh, like professional bags for teams, stuff like that. I think they do like sporting apparel as well now, but they used to make pads for Bauer. So Bauer's Reactor Series and their uh, Supreme Series were all made out of the JRZ factory. And for many of the actual glove uh, pieces of gear on Bauer, you could see the JRZ manufacturer tag on them. My 1X blocker has that on on the glove itself, it says made, in J, uh, made by JRZ and it has like the date of manufacturing. So Bauer used to make everything out of there, they now I think moved overseas, I don't know if they still make their pro stuff there or not, but it's a different question. Um, so JRZ, since their Bauer kind of split apart with them, has come out with their own set of gear. So this is it, it's all done through directly through them without retailers. Um, so here's the gear itself. It should look kind of familiar to a Reactor 9000, Reactor 6000, more so 9. Um, but uh, I've been using these actually, I've used them a few times already. So I will possibly be doing a review in the future, Future, but I'm going to be kind of just showing these off. Uh, just kind of showing off their features, showing off the gloves, stuff like that. Alright, so the pads themselves aren't super stiff. Um, they did tell me that they can change the stiffness on them and kind of build them out differently if you're looking for something else. Um, but so this is kind of them right now. As you can see, the boot is pretty soft. Thigh rise, doesn't have a ton of stiffness there. It has the outer brake, um, but it is kind of flexible. These, so far, play kind of similar to the SLRs I demoed, which were very broken in. Um, but that's kind of it for that. Uh, so yeah, now we'll cut to the other view so we can see a little bit more detail. So now we'll look at the gloves first. So the blocker is kind of what I was really interested in because it's very similar to a Reactor 6000, Reactor 9000, a one Bauer 1X, um, a Vapor 1X. So, I was, and there's a retro one on their website that I basically really, really want and might direct my future pad, pad purchase. Um, so anyway, so this is the JRZ blocker. Um, it's very, very similar to the 1X. There is slight differences just to how big this is and stuff like that, um, which if I do a review of these, I'll go over those details. But the finger protection, as you can see, is pretty close to Bauer. It's slightly different, but it's very well done. You have a nice hard sidewall right there. Lots of thumb padding, everything's nice there. Decent closure all the way through. Big open flap here. Um, and an interesting kind of detail on the palm. It almost feels, I'm not sure what this is. I think this is a digital palm for extra grip. It's very interesting. I have seen this style not in black before. Um, so we have a black version kind of right here. This was used obviously before I got it, so there is some like wear on it. I'm not sure if that's from tape or what, but that's kind of about it for that. This blocker is very, very similar to the ones I use currently. Um, so it's an easy transition. The board's fairly hard on it. Um, so yeah, I've, I've been enjoying using that so far, but that's about it for that. The finger position, as you can see, is kind of middle to lower. The fingers do extend past the bottom of the board. So if you're looking for like that type of fit, that's what it is. I'm sure they can move it up if you ask them. I haven't asked them about that yet. I will in the future though, if I'm going to make a purchase on these. So next we'll look at their catching glove. So then these are all the same lines. Um, kind of interesting design you have here. This is, to me, it looks really similar to a Reactor 9000. Um, it's their 60 degree break, which to me feels like kind of a one, my 1X. One so it feels like uh, 590 and CCM. The closure on this is fantastic, as you can see. Um, this I don't know if this is a game ready or pro palm. I have felt a couple shots on it. So sorry, a game ready or stock palm. Um, I have felt a couple shots on it. So if it was me, I'd definitely be getting a pro palm 
closure would probably be a little worse, but it's broken in pretty good. Closes is pretty nice. Um, this glove, the tee is kind of interesting, as you can see. I'm sure someone has flattened it out a lot because this tee is kind of brittle there where I never do that to my tee, so mine kind of hold out a bit different. Uh, but I've been able to catch with this glove pretty well. It is kind of an older style. As you can see, it is a two-piece cuff. I would prefer a one-piece, um, but that's about it. One thing I really like is this backhand protection. Nice and thick. I kind of like how it's just a piece over there. How you open this glove is pretty interesting. It has a strap that is magnetic, so you just pull it out. And it comes out, but it can just go back. As you can see, it can kind of just go back in. Um, so yeah, this is kind of interesting. Pull out, lift this up, Velcro back here. Then you got Velcro right here. And you Velcro the side. Now by no means is this easy to do in a game because I've had some issues where I had to take off my glove to kind of adjust my mask. Um, so it was kind of a pain. But I do really like this backhand protection. It's pretty like simple design, but it's also... Like that's pretty protective, so I'm uh, kind of a fan of that. So you have one strap down here um, that just tightens over the, the wrist right here. This is kind of a more traditional uh, finger placement where you have the two ring finger, pinky finger right here that come out with these thumb loops, or sorry, this loop right here. Then you have your index finger, and sorry, your index finger, middle finger holes right there, separate like that. Um, then you have your just wrist strap right here, and this one was undone because. Uh, Again, I was taking my mask off. I didn't have time to put it back on. People were complaining. And then you have this kind of quick strap right here. Um, I found this quick strap kind of doesn't work that well as a quick strap. It's kind of hard to pull either way. But, I mean, it is what it is. It's not that big of a deal. The material on the inside is all sure grip. So you can see right there, it's all that detailed. I like that material. I feel it holds very well in your hand. It's good for gripping. I think that I wish this was almost like a softer Nash though. That's not as super comfortable on the top of the hand because you don't really need grip there. And one thing JRZ kind of does that's interesting is on all their kind of leather tabs, you can see it has that sure grip and then leather on the back. I haven't seen another company do that. Usually it's just a piece of leather and the bare leather on the back here. They kind of glue it together or somehow connect it together and put it on there. It's kind of a pretty good attention to detail there. So that's pretty impressive. So I'm not, like this glove has kind of worked for me, especially for catching pucks, but the normal break, the break angle and kind of the style isn't really uh, what I'm used to and kind of comfortable with. So I'm not sure if I'd go this route if I did buy a whole set, um, but I'm, I'm, I was more impressed with it than I thought I would be. Uh, I thought it would kind of feel awkward in my hand because it was never really a, fine, a fan of reactors. Um, by all means, this is kind of an older style react, or an old reactor glove, but it's worked for me actually using, so it felt better than uh, it normally did. Normally gl those gloves did in the store. Um, so anyways, that's the gloves. All right, so next we're looking at the pads. Um, so these are kind of a more traditional pad. The one thing that when you look at them, the sides look really, really thick. By all means, this isn't a skinny pad, but it is a bit misleading just because of how the, the roll is kind of implemented into the side of the pad. I haven't noticed any issues with the thigh rises hitting each other when playing, but they are a bit more curved, so they kind of bend in closer to my leg in that regard and they're less straight um, but it's definitely this pad is definitely a thicker pad um, and like I said it is kind of a more traditional style pad here you kind of get a look at the strapping system which is kind of one of their new things that they're showing or they're, they're doing and kind of showing off it's very similar to what Bond is doing now um, with their straps I think this is actually kind of the same idea so we have these little tabs right here they connect going into that tab right there it's magnetic, kind of holds it in place. I have had this one pop off on me mid-game. Um, it wasn't really an issue because honestly, the strap that's doing anything for me is this one. So it's kind of annoying. Um, if I were to order these pads, I would just get these straps taken off, to be totally honest. Uh, it's just not something I need and not something I'd really use. And then, the, But the interesting part about these is that they are adjustable. So you can kind of see those screws right here. You can unscrew them from the back. Then you can move them up and down wherever you want them. Um, but like I said, for my usage, I wear these pads kind of loose. And this is good enough for me. Looking at the knee block really quick, you can kind of just see how you have your elastic on the knee. It can either be put down below or up. I always put it up. Um, nice soft Nash material right here on the block. And the block design is, you can see, soft Nash. You got a harder kind of foam or plastic there and then your outer wrap. You can, can see there is some layers of foam in here so you can see you have the hardest foam 
and kind of two softer layers right there for a little bit of comfort when you're landing. Uh, no issues with comfort on these. I've worn them three days in a row now, no issues at all. So kind of open up the back here as well and show this off. So there's that JRZ made of date I kind of mentioned um, in regards to that's what was on the old bower pads. Slightly different, but similar enough. So you have this inner, so the calf wrap, your outer wrap here with your elastic, which can be attached like this and can be kind of tightened and loosened. Um, and then you have your inner pillow, then you have your or middle pillow, pillow, then you have your most inner pillow where again, you can move these straps if you want to. Um, I, again, I wouldn't remove those, but it's a demo set, so I'm not going to. And then you have your leg channel. So you have a fairly, like it's not a super wide leg channel, but it's not as tight as I was kind of expecting. Um, and the way I wear these pads fairly loose there, it doesn't really feel restricting or anything like that. Again, it feels kind of similar to the SLR pads I wore, uh, but you have this nice gnash all the way through, very soft. And then looking at the boot, slide this out of the way. Looking at the boot, you have again, just a, a pretty traditional boot with a lot of padding here all the way through. Um, so these pads are what Peter Budai wore last year. I believe he actually wore a set that was unbranded. Um, he used to always be in reactors and I think Bauer made him switch to uh, vapors this year. But last year he was in basically this pad and I can kind of see that why there's a very big difference between these and Bauer vapors. Um, so again, it's personal preference thing. You have these bootstraps, which again, I wouldn't use if I were to order these pads, I would take it off. You can, it's a little screw system here, fold this in, pull it out and it comes out. And there's also a tab in here so you can pull this piece out as well. Very similar to my vapors actually in that regard. Um, this screw is actually gonna be way easier to take out though than the vapor, so good job JRZ there, or JRZ. So they have an interesting boot kind of attachment. And I can't remember, is that, it's called a hip saver. Um, and the idea is, so you have your now Velcro bungee kind of lace that many people are doing now. So you got your elastic there. But what they do differently is they have a screw and it kind of rotates. So it rotates with your foot. So it's supposed to save your hips because it doesn't pull your, your leg down at all. So I have used it. I haven't noticed honestly a difference so far, um, but that will kind of come in review when I talk about that. This is more just an overview. So looking at the toe, you have a standard binding kind of all the way through. Um, you have this exposed binding, but this part basically makes sure that doesn't really hit much. And then you have no exposed binding all through here. Again, this really shouldn't be hit much. So again, kind of a more traditional style, especially with the thickness. Um, so again, kind of harking back to those reactor pads. Um, and then moving from there, guess we'll look. So the thigh rise. Um, so yeah, so the thigh rise is kind of soft to all the way throughout the pads. You can kind of see it right here, um, where it's like they added cushioning to it. A lot of companies are going down the route of kind of removing everything and slimming them down as much as possible. So it's all basically right behind the nylon is exposed foams. JRZ or JRZ hasn't done that quite yet. These are still soft, kind of like, soft, like they feel kind of luxurious and more comfort oriented. Um, the pad def does have a bit of flex, like it does flex. Like I've been doing this test recently with a lot of pads. So it does flex. I would say it doesn't flex as much as other pads on the market. Um, it does like it doesn't flex as much as my my brines do, and it doesn't flex as much as the Warriors I've seen, but it does flex there. Um, the seal is pretty solid, uh, very solid indeed. I haven't had an issue with that at all. I, I like the way they play so far. Um, these are 36 plus one. They line right up to my 36 plus one brines and XL optics. Or sorry, XL vapors. Um, I think that's about it for the pads and for the gloves in this unboxing. Hopefully this video was pretty helpful and useful. Interesting pair of pads here. Um, also, I don't know if I mentioned it, it's $1,800 I think Canadian for the whole set for a custom set of gear. That's pretty ridiculous pricing. Very, very good. I don't know if anyone actually beats that. And that's custom colors, everything like that. Um, so that's a huge props for JRZ in that regard. And these are not like a budget style pad by any means. These are definitely a pro pad. And they're definitely, like the quality is definitely there. It's just the kind of the tech isn't totally there yet. But 
it's a reactor, and many people really like reactor pads. So I'm really interested to see what JRZ will do uh, in the future as well. So um, I'm going, I think that's about it for this video. I am going to use them a few more times, and then I'm gonna ask, uh, because JRZ didn't send me these pads to do a review on, um, and I kind of just got them as a consumer because I was interested in them and want to test them out. I'm not going to do a review without their permission on it. So I'm going to contact them, see if they're okay with that, see if I can review these after a few more usages. Um, so that's about it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was informative. I hope this video kind of put JRZ on your uh, possible market watch for Pat for gear to possibly purchase because so far I'm a pretty big fan of them. Um, Again, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Remember, I hate to say this. Remember to subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Twitter, Instagram. Links are in the description. Helps me get gear so I can do gear videos uh, and get some demo sets so I can talk about gear and do different things like that. Um, as well, if you ever make a purchase for a piece of equipment from my video or don't make a purchase, please reach out to the manufacturer on social media. It just helps me, again, get more exposure so I can get demo gear and so I can kind of use them and do reviews and talk about them that way. So thank you very much for watching and take it easy.